Colton's great. Like I said, I did I drank three cups of it today. So next we're gonna talk about peppermint. Peppermint's actually a crossbreed. True peppermint is a hybrid of watermint and spearmint. Okay, so when you when you see the Latin, it's mentha ex pepperita, ex signifying the cross between the two plants. Um, Peppermint's good for a lot of things. It has calming qualities to the digestive system. It has actually analgesic properties to the stomach lining and tissue. It works, yes? This grows here all by itself. Mm -hmm. It can. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's I the thing. I just wanted to make sure I understood that. Yeah, here, here's the thing. The reason why I focus on that it's a cross is because any of the mint family, like spearmint, mm -hmm. um, peppermint, uh, catnip, for that matter, is gonna have very similar qualities, minus certain things. Of course, catnip doesn't have the menthol content, a little bit, but it doesn't have the menthol content as peppermint, nor does spearmint have the, as, as much menthol okay. in it, okay? But there's other things that, you know, has vice versa and stuff like that, but they all work in a very similar fashion and are indicated for the same things. I simply say peppermint because people know the name peppermint. Peppermint is a cross, and it was strictly crossed for oil extraction. That's what it was crossed for and built for. Um, it, it is a genetically modified organism, okay? But it's through Mendelian genetics, not cut and splice genes genetics, okay? So it happened the natural way, yeah. So catnip is edible for us? Catnip is edible. It has the reverse reaction in us than it does with the feline persuasion. Catnip does grow around here, but it's, it's very rarely found in people's backyards, so it's not included in this list. If you've got a lot of water, you'll find, cat, you'll find catnip naturally growing on your property. It likes water, it likes to have a lot of it, um, and, and, and that's why it's there. So anyway, back to peppermint, okay? The qualities it has are soothing, calming, and tonifying to the stomach tissues, okay? It also has antibacterial properties and antimicrobial properties, antifungal properties, and this is mainly in its, in its uh, volatile oils, okay? The peppermint oil that you're getting out of it, okay? Um, it makes a great calming tea and a great, uh, a great infusion for, for colic and gas, especially with children, and it tastes good. Peppermint's good to put in with other things that don't really taste that great, like California poppy, okay? 50-50 California poppy and peppermint tea makes it pretty palatable. Then you combine the, the hypnotic, sleep-inducing properties of the California poppy with the calming and soothing properties of the peppermint. Good combination. They are catalytic in nature and they, they tend to improve the function of other like herbs. Okay, um, if, if, you, if you take an alterative, say like ginseng, you're not gonna do much by taking peppermint with it because they're just two completely different. If you're taking peppermint with chamomile, absolutely it's gonna have a catalytic function um, and really boost the effectiveness of the chamomile. If you take peppermint with another mint or another mint family, say like lemon balm, it's gonna catalyze with that and actually really increase its benefit too. Um, so yeah, so peppermint is a catalyst, but it needs to be with like, like functions. So, um, it, peppermint works great as a tea. You're after the leaves and the, the, the herbaceous stems, the root doesn't really have much function, much function to it. Um, although, the, once the plant dies back, a lot of the menthol qualities go into the root, and the root is sometimes used to extract oils, not just the leaves. But, um, really, what you're after is the leaves uh, and the flowering heads, and that's where you're gonna get a lot of your function for the home medicinal use. So, going on, the next thing we're gonna talk about is plantain. Um, we've got both plantains here. We've got 